Joining me now is Byron York, Washington Examiner, chief political correspondent and a Fox Business contributor. Byron, great to see you. Thank you for being here. So the Ukraine invasion already is making inflation worse uh, on the energy front, particularly, but but in other things, I mean, commodities as well, because Ukraine had a lot of wheat that is now uh, being held in reserve. But Powell, it seems like Powell is 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 getting antsy about things. They worried about the economy going down here and therefore uh, going easier on inflation than what he had planned before the Russian invasion. What do you think? Well, he should be antsy about things. When Chairman Powell calls the situation highly uncertain, uh, it, he's really understating things. Because one, uh, even if there were no problems at all in Ukraine, uh, the United States would still be grappling with this inflation problem, uh, the problem of it being more persistent and higher than originally had been thought uh, last year, what the Fed would do about it. These would be big questions right now, especially in an election year. And then you add Ukraine on top of that. And I think what the chairman was saying in, in his testimony today is that they don't know what's going to happen. He, he, he said that the, that the mm. uh, Fed was planning, hoping that inflation would be easing later this year. But if it doesn't, it has in mind higher increases, meaning half a point uh, increases in the future. Uh, but what he basically said was that the, the, the Russian sanctions have really thrown a wrench in all of this, as you just mentioned, increasing uh, inflation, disrupting supply chains, raising commodity prices, yeah. just uh, adding to the mess of a, uh, that was already quite uncertain. Right. And, and so if, if the Fed is not going to do anything to, to, of real substance to stop inflation, which is accelerating, it's just getting worse. It was already getting worse, as you mentioned, uh, before the Russian invasion, now after the Russian invasion it's, it's doubling down so I, I think we're inevitably going to have double digit inflation here's Biden's plan to lower inflation I'm just going to go through the four points he put this out right before the State of the Union yesterday so and I I can't imagine how he could expound on this in any way that would that would make people believe it would lower inflation but bolstering supply chains now he's already been doing that and to no avail with regard to inflation reducing the cost of everyday expenses whatever the hell that means enacting further antitrust measures that that just means he's blaming producers rather than his own misspending and and the feds monetizing of the debt and then promoting union labor i love that last one as if that's going to you know as if that's going to save any money <laughs> promoting union labor which is, uh, you know, not going to do anything for inflation. So if, if you can't rely on, on the Fed to do anything, you certainly can't rely on these methods of, of solving inflation. What does that mean? That means Americans are looking at, what, 10, 15, 20 percent inflation. Well, it could mean you're looking at a Republican landslide in November. Remember, when the president had the Build Back Better uh, bill, the agenda which is now dead, um, and inflation began to be a big problem, they simply began to argue that the Build Back Better agenda, maybe it spends $2 trillion, $3 trillion, uh, would somehow reduce inflation because that's just what they wanted to do. Right. And, and, and one note. When a number of Democrats talking, talk about reducing the price, reducing the cost of commodities or various expenses for average Americans, what they really mean is that the government will give them money to help pay for these things. Uh, it's, it's not an anti-inflationary measure. It's more of a redistribution measure, more consistent with what Democrats have, have been right. doing for decades. Well, but as you well know, and we just heard uh, Senator Manchin again with Larry Kudlow say, you can't spend your way out of debt. So he, is not, he has not weakened his spine on that point. Manchin is not going to go ahead with any of this. So, so I, I suspect that all spending plans uh, are over for the time being. But we also have a labor shortage, which is exacerbating our inflationary problem for other reasons. Is, is there any way that we could get back to that Clinton-esque workfare uh, program that we had, where, where, which would bring some people out of, out of their bedrooms and into the workforce again? Well, you know, a lot of those Clinton programs came after Bill Clinton uh, suffered a tremendous defeat right. in the 1994 midterms, his first midterm, so that he kind of got religion on some of these after that. Well, might that happen with a Biden? Republican majority? 
Well, might, it could yeah. happen. And the question is, is Joe Biden flexible enough uh, at this point? And, and also, are the Democratic constituency groups to whom he is indebted, are they flexible enough to do a kind of a Clinton-esque pivot? It seems to me that it would be very difficult uh, for that to happen simply because you'll have a number of people from Elizabeth uh, Warren and, and others to say that the problem was that Joe Biden was not doctrinaire enough, that he wasn't progressive enough. Uh, and that will be the debate uh, after the midterm elections if, if Democrats suffer a defeat. Well, and, and I, I think you could pretty much take the if out of there. I, I think it's going to be a debacle, <laughs> personally, uh, no matter what they try to do with fiddle with things. Byron York, good to see you, my friend. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.